So I figured I'd make a video, uh, more as a little public service announcement than anything else, uh, that you should listen to people when they warn you, even if those people are uh, people on the internet. Um, so I'll tell a little story about how I fried my uh, new PM30's motor controller. Uh, as you can see, it is not installed. Um, power has been removed to this whole section of the mill, uh, so the spindle, 220 volts, is all removed. Uh, the computer itself still has power, uh, and I'll walk through a little bit of the functionality I have left on the computer right now, um, and then I'll get into how I fried my C6 board and my motor controller. Um, so I am using Linux CNC to control uh, my PM30. I still have uh, control on all three axes, uh, and I'll show that a little in here. So Z down, X negative and positive, and Y. Uh, it's moving in around 110 inches a minute. Uh, I can get around 200 inches a minute, but uh, I don't really have a need for that. I also have functionality on my mist coolant on and off. Um, I'm going to power the computer down now so I can eventually get into the computer and uh, show you some stuff. So, uh, yeah, my mist coolant uh, is these two nozzles here. Um, and so, anyway, um, sorry for the bad angle. Uh, so, while I was hooking up my spindle control uh, through Linux CNC, I, I'll go through my power supplies here in a minute. I have a power supply here that is the regular computer's power supply. Uh, I have a 70 volt power supply that also has 5 volts in the back uh, here that I use for my breakout board which is right over here, and you can ignore all of this wacky wiring job I have. Uh, once the mill is up and running again, I'm gonna tidy up all these wires so it's a little more neat. Um, but, uh, so long story short, I had five volts powering my breakout board through my 70 volt power supply uh, off of this triodal power supply. I had 12 volts, um, from this power supply, powering both my relay down here for mist coolant, um, as well as powering my C6 breakup board, uh, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, and then, <clears throat> sorry, don't mind the compressor, it just kicked on. Um, I had, I'm just gonna flip this breakup board over. I had pins 16, uh, wired to the step uh, or frequency of my C6 board. Pin 14 was wired to my relay down there, but it seems like I have fried uh, portions of this board. Pin 14 doesn't work anymore, so I'm going to go and see if they're... Uh, I'm still getting an output from the parallel port, and it's just the C10 board that's not working, but uh, you can see some charring right there on the label. Uh, from my kaboom on the C6 board. Uh, and I was using this to power uh, the C6 board. So uh, I was under the assumption, and people can comment below uh, at how wrong I am, that you can't transfer grounds through two different power supplies. Uh, so the 70 volt power supply on the right was going to the uh, breakout board, uh, and my motors, or my steppers, I should say, um, and the computer's power supply through, you're just gonna have to push the I believe button because this wiring is a mess. Uh, this is a 12 volt power supply from the computer. Uh, was going to the C6 board. I was under the impression that uh, those could not share a ground. Uh, it's probably the misconception from mostly dealing with AC power supplies or transformers uh, where there's no physical connection, so you can't pass a ground through an air gap. Uh, and then the motor controller for the mill uh, was off of its own 220 volt service through this disconnect, uh, which again is off right now. So there is no 220 volt in here. Uh, and that powered the motor controller. Um, so I believed that I had three separate power supplies and there's no way I could have uh, exploded my mill. So I was wrong. 
Um, shortly after getting the two relays to work uh, to control spindle forward and reverse, uh, and I'd like to thank Dallas over at uh, Rival Machining. He uh, sent me his HAL file, and without him, I don't think I would have been able to get mine uh, up and running. So with his uh, really gracious help, I was able to get my um, C6 board to output the two relays, uh, as well as the um, linear voltage from zero to the full control voltage. Um, and that was just uh, taking taps off of the output of the C6 board. It was not connected to anything at that point. So uh, I wired up first the two relays alone, and the spindle would run in forward and reverse. This right here is my stock forward and reverse switch, which I removed and wired these three wires through those relays. Um, and that would work. I had my first glimpse of uh, spindle control from the computer, uh, except it was still controlled speed-wise by this potentiometer. So whatever it was set at was the speed that it spun at regardless of uh, what I told the controller to do. So uh, and I'll just flip you around so you can see what the front of this um, looks like. So then I... Um, Tried to measure across these, I believe, uh, based on my voltage readings, that this left wire here is the reference voltage, this right wire, uh, yellow one, was the ground, and then the third middle one was the wiper. Uh, when measuring across the ground and the wiper uh, with the motor controller off, I was getting 5 volts. I did get some uh, weird readings of up to 17 or 18 volts sometimes uh, when I had the spindle running. So I'm wondering if that was a fluke uh, or part of my problem or uh, I don't know how to use uh, crappy cheap multimeters, uh, which is what I was using. Um, but I was getting a pretty accurate 5 volt measurement um, between the ground and the reference and then the wiper uh, to the ground was a 0 to roughly 5 volts as I uh, changed the potentiometer. So uh, I did believe that it was a, a 5 volt control signal uh, that sent the motor controller the speed uh, adjustment. So uh, I hooked up the two uh, lines to my um, wiper and my ground taps. I turned the computer on. I had no issues there. Got the controller booted up and then uh, flipped my 220 volt disconnect. The second I hit the green um, button on the front here, which supplies power to the motor controller and everything, I heard a loud pop. A uh, flash of light came out of this controller or the computer and everything turned off. The computer itself turned off. All the fans started winding down, had a mini heart attack, and I tripped my 220 volt disconnect um, and saw some smoke coming out of the computer. So long story short, not that this is a very short video, is as you can see here, my C6 board, and if you trace that line on the PCB, it goes to this second pin right here. And if you flip it over, the second pin, sorry, is focus, is ground. Uh, left is step, that was coming from my C10 board, uh, pin 16, and then those two direction clockwise, enable counterclockwise, was going to my relays out to my spindle uh, direction. So this 12 volt in and ground was connected to the ground on the uh, computer's power supply and 12 volts on the computer's power supply. This ground was ground coming from my C10 board and the other three wires were also coming from pins on my C10 board. And I actually just noticed for the first time there is some charring right there as well, which uh, could lead me into really diagnosing what my problem is later. I'll have to look into that. Um, so I was able to remove the C6 board, turn on the computer, and I had functionality of everything I showed you. Pin 14 was initially what I used for that relay for MIST, uh, and that is no longer functioning, so I switched it to pin 8. Other than that, I haven't tried any other pins on this row. Other than that, I didn't lose any functionality inside the computer uh, or for the computer itself. So. Uh, I know it is tough to admit, but I'm sure that Dallas and everyone else that said it on the internet was correct, uh, and it had something to do with 
my lack of an independent power supply, a specific dedicated five volts, or sorry, 12 volts from an old crappy wall outlet plug uh, to that C6 board. Uh, again, I don't fully understand how the grounds could be connected because in my opinion, there was one, two, three separate power supplies. Uh, so I don't know how far removed those grounds need to be. Um, and again, I'm not an electronics guy as is very evident uh, by my terrible wiring, uh, the mess that is this cabinet and the burned up C6 board over on the cabinet over there. So if anyone wants to comment below on why exactly they think I got this kaboom, uh, I'm a little curious at how uh, opto isolators work. I'm gonna read into that and how to actually isolate grounds, especially if it's through power supplies. Again, I think this is just my ignorance in DC power supplies uh, where I am under the impression that you can't transfer ground through a power supply. That is probably only true if there's an air gap in an AC power supply or transformer and not through DC transformers. So um, I am 50-50 on whether I want to give this a shot again because my new motor controller, uh, which they obviously filled up with this resin so I can't even see what components are damaged. I'm not going to bother to try to get replacement parts. I ordered a new one of these from Matt over at Precision, Precision Matthews uh, today. We'll see how long that get, takes to get here. Um, when that gets here, if I can get the spindle back to running uh, manually, I am 50-50 on whether I want to give the C6 board a shot again. Um, if I could get some confidence, uh, some smarter than me people out there uh, on whether they think that giving it its own dedicated wall power supply will do the trick uh, and there's nothing else that I'd need to change, then maybe I would give it a shot again and have full CNC control, um, but we'll see. One day I'll do a walk around. I know I haven't done a, a proper walk around of the mill yet. Uh, 